So welcome back everybody to Turnabout Time Traveler. It's time for day one of the trial. We've been waiting for this. Waiting anxiously for about two days in my case, but in your case, maybe even longer than that. I don't know. Well, probably not, because this will go up on Saturday. It's Friday's video will be the finish of the investigation. Anyway, uh... Yeah, 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 I'm good. <laughs> I didn't realize I was saving here. I thought I was choosing a file to load. I always get that mixed up. Anyway. September 22nd, 8.45 a.m. Just record defense lobby number one. No, number three. Uh -huh. Jeez, get out of that dress, woman. Really, now. Good morning, Mr. Wright. Good morning, Ellen. I see you're still wearing your wedding gown. That thing must be awfully sweaty by now. And I will continue to wear it until our marriage is saved. I'll be very stinky by then. Oh, Soren. What am I gonna do? I can't help it if I'm stinky. Oh, the two united at last. And he doesn't care at all. Maya does, though. Do you think he came to see how she's holding up? I am not getting that impression from him, though. Like, seriously, dude. Soren, my love, you came all the way to the courthouse just to see me. <gasps> oh, Soren, I don't want to know what to say. I don't know what to say. <laughs> just go back to your normal voice. Blueprints. Now. Huh? The engine blueprints. I can't find them. Do you know where they are? Oh, they're in your room, third shelf from the bottom on the right-hand side. Oh. That's all I could say was, oh, I see. So, so, well, okay, so he didn't come to see how she was at all. Blueprints for what? The time machine? No, I mean, he said engine blueprints, right? Is he really that cold of a person, or is that just how he comes off, I wonder? I think maybe he's not allowed to... Like, is somebody else in here that would see him acting like this? Or is it just something he can't do in public? I mean, I don't know. Or is this like a different version of him that doesn't know that something has happened? Ellen. He's back. Okay, get real, dude. Please get real. Give this woman some poor... Uh, give this woman some comfort. I... My word's out of order. Mm. Come home soon. I'm lost without you. <gasps> oh! Yes! Soren! Oh, there she goes. That's my girl. Let it all out, honey. Let it all out. Later. Oh, he's so cool. So cool under pressure. Looks like showing your vulnerabilities is the fastest way to capturing a woman's heart. You should take notes on this thing. Oh, trust me, I've tried it. Don't bother. Please leave me out of this. Anyway, it looks like Soren isn't big on words. But he's big on feelings. He just doesn't have... He just can't translate is all. But it's clear that he cares about Ellen. Knowing that, I actually feel kind of relieved. Well, I should hope... You know, we gotta be fighting for something here. Make yourself up, honey. Oh, god damn, dude. How do women do that? Mr. Wright, I just absolutely can't wait. Can't. Oh my god. What I thought that said for a second there was not good. Can't be found guilty, you hear? Don't worry. I'm gonna do everything I can to prove your innocence. Thank you, Mr. Wright. Okay, but let me just make it clear to you that I'm not gonna do it today. That'll be tomorrow. Or in part two of the trial. Anyway, Edgeworth, let's just, let's just leave this on the screen for, you know what, stop doing that. Knowing him, he's not going to yield an inch. <laughs> Never mind. So I've just got to fight with everything I've got and save Ellen. Oh man, I got this huge smile on my face right now. You can see me smiling as I got him. <laughs> Nine a.m. Boy, how early did we have to get up for this? But I don't care. It's worth it. He's worth it. Courtroom number six. Execute order number sixty-six on my heart. <gasps> mm! I'll rise. Here we go. Court is now in session for the trial of Ellen Wyatt. 
The defense is ready, Your Honor. This is the last time. The prosecution has been ready for a while, Your Honor. He said that before. What other case did he say that in? Oh, man. Uh, I don't remember. Seeing so many familiar faces gather together like this. I feel as though I'm at a grand reunion. It makes me want to go out for dinner and a drink and reminisce with all of you. Sorry if that AC's a little loud in the background, it just clicked on, but uh... I can usually reduce it in audacity, but I can, I can only do like so much. I hope it's not too obvious. Oh, that sounds like a great idea. Yes it does, Maya. Why are you on my left side? You're supposed to be over there. You're not the leader of this brigade. I was dying for a real burger the whole time I was away. Yeah. We can make it a welcome back party for Maya. How about it, Edgeworth? He's like, no. I mean, maybe. I have no intention of cavorting with my enemies. Now that you're on it, let's just stop this trial at once. Straight to business. But that's what turns me on about you. Your attention to detail. Still not one for light-hearted banter, are you, Mr. Edgeworth? Hell no. Jokes and good humor are beyond worthless in a court of law. Save that shit for the outside, my man. Guess we'll just have to have the party without him, then. <laughs> uh? However, were it after the conclusion of this trial, I might consider joining you for your little welcome back party. See, there you go! D wait, oh, wow. I don't think I've ever seen this pose of him. Like, in HD like this, or whatever you call this version of the game. Uh, wow, man, he looks good. I certainly wouldn't mind an invite, at the very least. Well, consider yourself invited, dude. He's still as emotionally constipated as ever, I see. You know, in the heartland! I don't know. <laughs> wow. Now then, Mr. Edgeworth, if you could please go over the details of this case for us before we forget everything. The victim was Dumas Gloosbury, a servant in the Sprocket household. He was in attendance at the wedding reception that occurred from 7pm to 10pm. Mr. Gloomsbury apparently left, uh, felt some animosity toward Ellen Wyatt, and so, a bit after the reception ended at 10 p.m., he assaulted Miss Wyatt with the intent to kill her. Okay, so we're saying he did this after the first reception. Which makes sense, because it was during the second one that she found him. So, it's, it's all about what happened in between the two, and also, like, why is nobody suspicious that there were two receptions? Like, how many people were in on this? The defendant fought back and ended up killing Mr. Gloomsbury. Hmm. In other words, it was justified self-defense, correct? If that's the case, then I see no need to prolong this trial. He's right. I didn't actually read the right words there, I just felt like going with something else. Worst case scenario, I could go for self-defense to avoid the criminal charge. I wonder how Edgeworth plans to counter that, though. The prosecution's first witness will make my view on the matter clear, Your Honor. I wonder if your feelings on this matter are clear, Lord Vader. They are clear, my master. Very well, Bailiff, please bring in the first witness. So, who we got? It's not Gumshoe. Oh, Emma. <laughs> I recognize your feet this time. Am I getting better? Getting better? Oh, God, she's so beautiful. Please state your name and occupation witness. How can he not have a hard on right now? Like, seriously. Look at her. She's beautiful. Emma Sky, forensic investigator. I know. I'm, I don't know that I'm beautiful, but but that's what makes you even more beautiful. And I just like to say, sir, that being in the same courtroom as you is a great honor. Girl, I could ship these two. Oh, that's right. You're a fan of Edwards, aren't you, Emma? That's right. This goes all the way back to like to what? Um, shit. What's that case even called? Case one five. You know. She hasn't really gotten to see him that much, you know, over the course of the series, so... We're good friends and all, Mr. Wright. But, just this once, I intend to faithfully and fully testify for the prosecution. So have- so put that in your pipe and smoke it. Huh, I expect no less from you. Well, you're gonna get no less, let me tell you. Yes, sir, I'm gonna do my very best. Uh oh I don't wanna poke holes in her theory, I just wanna poke holes in her! Looks like you lost a popularity contest to Mr. Edgeworth. Like, shut up! I really could care less. <laughs> Besides, we'll see who's the better lawyer once I win this trial. Yeah, maybe then you'll actually really care less. 
Oh, this is the greatest thing that's ever happened. Now, Detective Scott, if you please. That was the wrong voice. I don't care. Damn, damn, damn. I wish you could see what I'm seeing. The murder weapon was a clock called the Timekeeper. The victim was hit with it from behind, and he fell over right into the lantern. The defendant was spotted then, standing in front of the body, holding the murder weapon. The victim was struck twice, by the way. Oh, really? Hang the F on. He was struck twice? Yeah! That's right, there's no mistake about it. Uh-oh. Here come the glasses. The first blow was to the back of the victim's head. It's hard enough to knock him unconscious. Yet, despite the fact that he had been immobilized by the first blow, the defendant delivered a second fatal blow to the side of the victim's head. Huh. Which means what exactly? So she still could have knocked him out, and then someone else come along and delivered the side blow. Would they have any way of knowing exactly? Oh my god, that shrug. Oh, he is so happy right now. And I would be too. I figured it might go right over your head. Maybe we should have smashed your head instead. Let's put it this way, by striking the victim a second time, the defendant killed her last chance to escape from any criminal wrongdoing. So that's why he's going to say it's not justified self-defense. Because hitting him once would have been enough to get away, that would have been enough to defend herself, but hitting him a second time would not be justified if he was already knocked out. The defendant may have been fighting back because she was being attacked. However... She then went on to deliver a fatal blow to a man who was already fully unconscious. Nick, is he saying what I think he is? Yeah, he totally is. I don't feel so well. Neither does my phone. Oh man, oh shoot. And thus Mr. Wright has justified self-defense been removed from the table. The prosecution intends to prove that the defendant killed the victim with murderous intent. Allow me to belatedly submit the victim's autopsy report. Man! Trope after trope falling into my lap. And I smile. Finally the bow. This is just... <laughs> This is pure fan service at this point, I don't even know. And I'm loving every minute of this, Bob, I'm loving it! So that's why he was acting all smug. Well, more smug than usual. It's fine, right? It's not like we were going to plead self-defense anyway, right? Right, but now the judge has a negative impression of Ellen. He's, uh, I don't know yet. It's been pretty quiet so far. Huh. Of course, we're like five minutes into this, he can't really say anything just yet. He may not get to prosecute much anymore, but he definitely hasn't lost his touch. What do you mean by that? Dude, he's gonna be cross- Dude, he's gonna be doing this till he's 90 years old, man. And he's gonna just keep getting better. 35 is not old, okay? Trust me, guys. It's not. Neither is 40. Neither is 50. To me, like, 60 is when you're really- You know what? Never mind. That number just keeps getting higher all- Anyway. Now then, Mr. Wright, you may begin your cross-examination, and let's stop talking about age, can we please? Cross-examination. Okay, we're gonna press everything. We're pressing everything for this entire trial. Everything will be pressed. And we will not be depressed. The murder weapon was a crook called the timekeeper. Here we go. Are you completely sure the murder weapon was the timekeeper? Yes. Completely. The shape of the injury on the victim's head matches up with that of the timekeeper. Which one, though? And it's definitely heavy enough to kill someone with. Well, probably the first one. But, like, it, did they, they, they couldn't have matched them both, right? But would the defendant have been able to pick up and swing something so heavy? I tried it myself, and I was able to lift it up just fine. Yeah, but you work out. Don't think I couldn't tell. Maybe you're just freakish. <laughs> you're just. <laughs> you just get this picture in your head of Emma Sky lifting up a freaking dump truck or something. I mean, I don't know. Shit, man. Excuse me, Mr. Wright. I'll have you know that people on the force know me as the Dainty Forensic Investigator. Not to be confused with Leslie Dainty. Sorry, but really, you're hardly a d delicate flower. Well, mm, uh, I don't know. 
Mr. Wright, what are you doing? This is a court of law. Save your antics after the trial, if you know how. Ah, that's the thing, see? I don't know how! Yes, sir. It won't happen again, sir. <laughs> Moving on. Moving on, indeed. The victim was hit with it from behind, and he fell over right into the lantern. See, it seems like if he was falling... Like, what was the lantern doing there? I, I don't know. Let me see. The defendant was fighting back against the victim, right? If so, wouldn't she have hit him from the front and not from behind? I mean, true. The victim must have tried to run once Miss White started fighting back. That's probably when he got hit from behind. I see. That's the blow to the back of his head. Well, that makes it even worse, then. If he was running, like, that's even worse for the self-defense plea, isn't it? The defendant must have looked awfully scary when she was brandishing that clock. Just like I would. I don't know about that. Anyway, regardless of how scary Ellen looked, the victim was definitely hit from behind. May I go on? Yeah, of course. Please do. <laughs> We're just having a conversation here, no big deal. The defendant was spotted then, standing in front of the body, holding the murder weapon. Holding. Okay, gotcha. But still, that's only because she was so panicked when she found the body. She tried to use the timekeeper to go back in time. Objection. Oh, great. Oh my god. He is mightier and deeper and more manly and masculine and burly and than ever. Mr. Wright, do you have any idea how absurd you sound? But Miss Wyatt really believed she could travel through time with that clock. You really should have come up with a more credible story, you know? It's not my story. It's hers. It's what she thinks. I'm not saying it's true, I'm just saying that's what she was thinking when she was holding it, you know? Me three, but it's all I've got to go on. Anyway, under the circumstances, the only conclusion we can draw is that the defendant killed the victim. Alright, now for the humdinger. The victim was struck twice, by the way. That's where things are gonna fall apart here now. Miss Wyatt must have had a chance to escape after she struck the victim the first time. So why would she stick around and hit him with a, such a heavy object again? Well, about that. She hated his guts. Allow me to explain. Why did she strike him again indeed? To finish off the victim, of course. Are you stupid? This very act clearly shows that she had every intention of killing Mr. Gloomsbury. Hmm. But Miss Wyatt would never do a thing like that. I don't care what you think, little girl. Then let's see some evidence that disproves my theory. Nerd! Are you gonna just stand there and take that from him, Nick? Oh, I can't refute his claim head on, so I'll just have to apply some evidence directly to his shoulders. Or approach from a different angle. Well, it looks like we won't be going anywhere until we can refute Edgeworth's claim. This is so exciting, we haven't taken on Mr. Edgeworth in ages! I know, you don't have to keep reminding me, but it's still, it is exciting, isn't it? No need to rush me, Maya. We're taking our time here, we're gonna milk this for every single last press that it's worth. Better start by comparing Emma's testimony with the evidence we have, and look for any glaring inconsistencies. You don't have to tell me twice. So the murder weapon was a clock call at the time. Keeper! Well, let's just take a second look. We haven't really looked over the evidence since we started here. It has been a couple days, so pendant worn by Ellen. It seems she received it from her fiancé. Ellen saw a suspicious third party on the Vista deck when she was being attacked by Gloomsbury. Okay, yeah, there was that too. That might be something we could use. A pamphlet for the Flying Chapel. It is the timekeeper, so we know that's not wrong. Selena Sprocket's not gonna have anything to do with this. Fog machine, probably not. Gloomsbury's note, I mean... I, think, I don't think we've really come that far into it yet. Photo of the victim, I mean, you know... I don't know, it, just, it seems weird. That she knocks him over and the lantern just happens to be there, happens to be open for him to fall into. I don't know, it's all a little... Oh, I noticed something else, too, when we were down on the lower deck. There were some flowers that matched the little petal next to his hand there. 
So it sounds like he was down there too at some point. And probably he, pretty recently before he died, he was down there too if he still had the pedals on him. Why would he have the pedals though? I don't really know. And then we have, of course, the Pegable Lantern in which the victim's body was found. Wait, we have a third page here. What's on? Oh, God. Photo of reception. Yeah, here. You can see the flowers here. Oh, no, not here. Just something else here. That is a photo of the reception, though. I'm not seeing much of how we can really prove anything with that. Larry's drawing. Nope. Photo of hold. This is the one. Yeah, the flowers on the far right of the screen there. That's the petals there next to his hand. So eventually we're gonna have to prove that he was probably down there. And then autopsy report. Oh, we haven't even looked at this yet. Gloomsbury's head shows signs of being hit twice. Timekeeper was used as the murder weapon. Time of death, September 20th, 10 p.m. to 1 a.m. Uh, cause of death, cerebral hemorrhage from a strong blow to the head. One contusion was found on the back of the head, the one on the side. The blows were caused by the same weapon. Okay. But that's really all there is. Okay. Now let's look over this again here. The victim was hit with it from behind, and he fell over right into the lantern. The defendant was spotted then, standing in front of the body, holding the murder weapon. Uh, what did we say was the thing that was gonna... I mean, this kind of establishes that there was a third person. But are we really gonna use her statement to refute this? Like, I don't think that's gonna work. So they're not gonna believe it. Just because it's in my evidence doesn't mean it's objectively true, but it's like the closest thing I can see here. Unless there's like another statement here. Struck twice, does that... does that contradict what she said? I mean, all this says is she saw a third party, right? Because she's saying she passed out after whatever, after he got hit. Uh, I think I'm going to try it. Objection! I haven't talked too much about it. I don't want to leave too much of the talking in, though. Your Honor, I have a feeling this piece of evidence contradicts the witness's statement. But that's all it is. It's a feeling, you say. Yes, Your Honor. Or rather, a hope that it indicates a contradiction. Mr. Wright, is there or isn't there a contradiction here? Uh, looks like there is, but there really isn't one, is there? Huh. <laughs> I don't know, it looked like it to me, but again, like, you can't use her statement, though. Okay, well, that's a bad start. Edward's just like, here we go, dude, you are, you, you suck, man. Oh, with a lawyer like you, Mr. Wright, even I feel bad for the defendant. <laughs> well, you don't have to feel bad for her for long. I'll get it right next time. You'll see. Oh my god. <laughs> wow. I'm kind of glad we got to see that dialogue. <laughs> Jeez. Oh man. Okay, what are we looking at here? This one kind of bugs me too, and I brought it up before, but... I don't know if I can use that. Do I have... We do it... Well, duh, we do have the picture of it. We were just looking at it. I just still am not sure I buy the way he fell, fell into this lantern. So if he was hit from behind, he wouldn't have fallen into it like that. But it's even more suspicious to me that she would have been able to hit him a second time in the head in that position. Just seems a little too crazy. That might be worth a shot. Worth a shot. That might be worth a shot. <laughs> Jeez. So this be a... Mm. Yeah, I'm gonna try it. Ah, here we go. Booyah! Detective Sky, I'm afraid I have to apologize in advance. For what? You're not breaking up with me, are you? <laughs> For embarrassing you in front of your idol. Oh, God. But what do you mean? If you take a look at this photo of the crime scene, something is not making a lot of sense here. You'll see that the victim is lying on his back. But if the victim had been hit from behind, as you claim, then he should have fallen over into the lantern face down. He wouldn't even have a face anymore. It's not enough to simply take someone's side, Detective Scott, even if it is Mr. Edgeworth. Oh, God. Oh, but, this, oh, but she's just... She's a fangirl, you know? She, there does appear to be a flaw in Detective Scott's testimony. Mr. Wright, if you think I'm going to just back right down, then you're sadly mistaken. 
Emma is unusually fired up today. Yeah, she's probably listening to Get Up, Get Out there or something. Why am I doing this? Oh my god. Don't forget she's in front of her hero, Nick. It's Wake Up, Get Up, Get Out there, by the way. It's a Steel Samurai. I came to watch this trial. I'd want to do my absolute best, too. Listen, Mr. Wright, you can stop comparing me to certain other people here. I am my own character, I'll have you know. It's entirely possible that the defendant moved the victim's body after he fell over. In that case, there wouldn't be any contradiction, right? Moved the body? Uh, yeah. Good job, Edgeworth. Yes. Let her be happy. Please just let her be happy, you know? That's what you have to say to that, Mr. Wright. Is it possible the victim's body was moved after he fell in the lantern? No, it's not. As much as I hate it, it's not. Sorry, detective, but there's no way the victim's body was moved after his death. Oh, really? And what makes you so sure? Please don't say anything. I look good to him right now. One well, look at this here and it should become obvious. Well, see, there's like debris and stuff on top of his chest, so he probably... Couldn't have been moved, right? Take that! That's kind of weird. I didn't even see that until just now. Those broken bits of the lantern? Yeah! If the body had been moved after the fact, these fragments would have fallen off of it. Yeah. But as you can clearly see, they're lying perfectly undisturbed on top of the body. This means that the victim must have been lying face up from before the lantern even broke. Damn, dude. Oh, you're right! Crap, man! But wait a minute, if that's true, then when was the victim killed? <laughs> Don't say the word when. I mean, the lantern was still whole during the reception, right? Right, which means we just overturned a major assumption about this case. If the victim was already dead before the lantern was even broken, then the body must have been inside the lantern since before the reception started. No shit! In other words, well, of course, I have no right to speak, I stumbled a little bit there, too. The defense asserts that the victim was killed was killed before the wedding, were, were, the, before it. I can never match up my beatboxing with this song for some reason when I do it. In short, when Miss Wyatt was seen standing in front of the body after the reception, it wasn't the moment just after the murder was committed. It was like two years later, man! Maybe literally, I don't know yet. It was the moment she happened to discover the body, just as Miss Wyatt claims. Ah! Well, wow, Edgeworth's not so quick to go down, though. <laughs> That's okay. Huh, um... But whether the act was committed before or after the reception is entirely inconsequential. After all, it was the defendant who prepared the reception hall for the event in question. Damn right it was. Therefore, when the murder occurred, it changes nothing with regard to her guilt. She could have killed the victim before the reception, as you claim, and then tried to hide his body in the lantern after the event ended. Objection! Well... I don't think so. Sorry, but that doesn't wash. I mean, where would the body have been hidden during the reception in your scenario? Ah, uh, that's... Even you got to admit it, Mr. Edgeworth, that this has opened up a new possibility. Do explain, Mr. Wright. I'm all he is. Well, if Miss Wyatt didn't commit the crime in the reception hall, then that means someone somewhere put the victim's body into the lantern. I suppose that makes sense. A dead body couldn't have put itself in there. <laughs> yeah. Exactly, Your Honor. In other words, if the murder actually occurred before the reception, it opens up the possibility that... Uh, all three of these, kind of, right? If it actually occurred before the reception... It opens up the possibility he was killed somewhere else and then brought there inside of the statue, is what I'm thinking. Does it open up the possibility that the defendant didn't do it? Yeah? I mean, if he was killed somewhere else, wouldn't that open up the possibility that the defendant didn't do it? I think we just need to take the first step here. Before the reception. Well, he's talking about when the murder occurred, not, like, how, so I don't think that has anything to do with, like, how he was killed. It seems like we're gonna get to that later. I'm gonna say somewhere else. 
and uh, pray to God here. <laughs> if the body was hidden inside the lantern, then it's possible the body was moved along with it from somewhere else. Oh, you're right! Damn right I am. You can run that mouth of yours all you want, but let me run my finger and see... But do you have any evidence to support what's coming out of it, Mr. Wright? Yeah, I think I do. I think the answer lies in that piece of evidence and in something that was left at the crime scene that will point us to where the victim was really killed. Is this the flower petals? I think it might be. What proves that the lantern and the body were moved from somewhere else? This is a long shot, though. Because would they really expect somebody to notice that? They only touched on it briefly when we were looking at the evidence. Based on the flower petals, I'm pretty much assuming that he was either killed in the hold or taken from the hold. Well, yeah, I guess probably killed in the hold. And there are horses here, because that's where the horses come from. But the thing is, the flowers are here too. What proves that the lantern and the body were moved from somewhere else? Um, but 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 uh. So could we go either way with it, like? present the photo and point out the petals, or present the photo of the hold and point out the flowers, or am I getting ahead of myself again? I can't help but feel like I might be getting ahead of myself, but lantern and the body were moved from somewhere else. I'm gonna try the picture of the hold, I think. Take that! This proves that the murder took place somewhere other than the reception hall! Uh, you were a little too quick to point there. I'm afraid I can't say that I follow. That piece of evidence won't help you make your point, Nick. Yet another pointless piece of evidence from a senseless attorney. You should let Maya do your job for you. Fine, so this piece wasn't convincing enough. There must be something else that would be a lot easier for the judge to understand. Oh, is that why all this time? All this time we've had to take baby steps because of that. I mean, if you say so. Maybe, uh, okay, I'm gonna actually try the photo of the victim here. To see, if maybe I'm just taking it from the wrong angle. The photo of the victim again? Yeah, that's right. It's another one of those, isn't it? I'd like the, the court to focus on this thing right here. Uh-oh. Okay, are we? That's the whole reason I presented this, so I'm gonna... Yeah, yeah, let's do it. Let's try it. Let's go with it. Flower petals, Mr. Wright. You look like a flower, baby. These petals are from a kind of flower that were not present in the reception hall. This means they must have gotten into the lantern when it was somewhere else. Yeah, I can see that. I just why do you suppose this is somewhat else to be, Mr. Wright? I propose... Not, wait, I'm not proposing. That was somebody else. But uh, this piece of evidence will tell you where the flower petals came from. I'm glad I noticed this when I did. Take that! Please take a look at the flowers in this picture of the hold. Notice how their petals are of the same shape as the petals in the crime scene photo? Notice their bold colors and the way they stand out. Objection! Objection! I don't know nothing about no flowers. Shut up. Wait, wait that's not my voice. What am I... Is that really all you've got? A flower is a flower is a flower. They're all the same. Really? I didn't think you were so narrow-minded, Mr. Edgeworth. Miles! Seriously! I would hardly call what you presented compelling evidence. I'm afraid I couldn't disagree with you more, Mr. Edgeworth. Oh, thank God. I thought he was about to agree. Of course, he did shake his head. He could have been shaking his head, like, in agreement with Edgeworth against me, though. I gave a flower of this type to my lovely wife once when we were young. When we were young. So I can assure you that this is very meaningful and compelling evidence indeed. The soundness of my judgment in this matter is backed by nothing less than pure love. Well, thank God. But, Your Honor, let it go, Mr. Edgeworth. It's clear you don't know much about flowers. <laughs> it's not like you have anyone you'd actually give any to after. Whoa! Okay! You're gonna do that? You're seriously gonna do that? That's mean, man. I'm sorry. Oh my god, dude. 
Oh my god, no! Oh god. Jeez. But maybe you should study up on them just in case the opportunity presents itself. Oh! Oh no! No, 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 no. This from the man who only knows the names of three types of flowers. I'll have you know, I know four now. I memorized one yesterday. It's called a petunia. That's hardly relevant to the case at hand. Well, it is, though. Man. The defense asserts that it's highly probable that the victim was killed in the hold. If the body was then placed in the lantern and moved to the reception hall for some reason. Through the cabin. Well, they could have also gone to the... Well, could they have gone to the Vista deck? Or could they have gone to the Vista deck also? Maybe? I don't know. It would completely destroy the prosecution's case, though, if this were true. Then you mean the body was... You know it. Yes, the victim's body was indeed... ...moved there, inside the lantern during the entire beautiful wedding reception. While the defendant and their betrothed were celebrating their love, there was a dead body. What? Oh yeah. Shaking it up, baby. Shaking it up, y'all. Nope. He's not giving up. Edgeworth never gives up. You should know better. <laughs> I'll have you know I'm still snide about that single remark you made to me just now. Your smooth talk might work on his honor, but it won't work on me. Your Jedi mind tricks won't work on me, boy. What are you talking about now? Take another look at all of the evidence and you'll soon see what I mean. Uh, well, she would just tell me already. Well, let me think for a second, like, what's he getting at? Maybe I should take a look at the evidence like he says. Maybe I can call what it is he's about to say. Even though he's pretty much just going to say it either way. I think it'd be fun to try to figure it out. So the one thing I didn't, I didn't, one thing about the note that I didn't really touch on, I guess I didn't notice it last time. This says grab Ellen when convenient, then send her off from the Vista deck. I feel like the word send is the key word here, because I don't think if you were going to throw somebody off, or toss somebody off, or push somebody off, or nudge somebody off, or, there's a million other words that you would use, but send her off, that could mean pushing her off too, I, I will concede that, it's just, it doesn't seem like that's the kind of word you would choose though, you send them off on their way, you know, that kind of thing, not send her off the side of a blimp, I don't know. That's probably what he's going to be talking about here, though. I don't know. Detective Sky, I'm sure you've already figured out what I'm talking about, correct? Yeah. <laughs> of course, sir. Mr. Wright is the only one here who hasn't. Why don't you leave this to me, Mr. Edgeworth? Very well. Let's see what you can do. Oh, do it, Emma. Kick my ass, please. Kick it hard. Kick me in the balls if you have to. Oh, I just love her stance there. Oh, so sexy. Ah, I'm sorry. The victim could not have been killed before the reception. The autopsy report states that the estimated time of death was after the reception. You know, I saw that, and I was like, uh... And that estimated time of death is correct. There's no way it could be wrong. Well, here come the time travel nonsense. <laughs> Maybe. It's clear Mr. Gloomsbury was killed after the reception. And that completely contradicts your claim. Oops. I guess so. Tell me you took at least a cursory glance at the autopsy report, Mr. Wright. I did! But I thought... I don't know what I thought. I figured it was irrelevant for the time. Well, now it's coming back to bite us in the butt here. It appears you've grown rusty since our last outing. Dude! Might I suggest you go back and brush up on the basics. Oh, uh, sure. Though I must say, you're as cocky as ever, Mr. Edgeworth. <laughs> he sure is. I beg your pardon. What are you trying to say, Mr. Wright? I'm just saying that I'll go back to basics if that's what Mr. Edgeworth wants. I'll prove how badly he's underestimating me with a good old-fashioned cross-examination. <laughs> I love the way they build these things up like you don't already know what's coming. Very well, let's see you put your money where your mouth is, Mr. Wright. 
because you know, just, I don't want to see what else you're putting in there, but anyway. Oh my god, the prosecution's rebuttal. Here we go. There's only like three statements here, so it's not pretty easy. The vi oh, I, of course I say that now. The victim could not have been killed before the reception. Hold it. You sound pretty certain. You must have some solid grounds for making that claim, right? Of course I do. And you're going to feel silly when I show you what they are. Ready? Feast your eyes on this. The autopsy report states that the estimated time of death was after the reception. Hold but hold it. I've read the autopsy reports who you know. Yeah, so? You don't need me to explain it to you, right? How there's no way the victim could have been killed before the reception, I mean. Detective Sky. I think you've overlooked something big. Is there some way they could have rigged it so that he was still alive? When he was inside the horse and then something killed him? And then he spilled out? Maybe he's suffocated in there or something? <laughs> Let's take another look at the evidence. But I've already looked at all the evidence, and quite carefully too, I'll have you know. Could it be that the note is going to end up saving us rather than him? I don't know what to make of that note. Detective Sky, do not be taken in by his verbal antics. He is simply bluffing, as always. Right, sir. I know that. I'm bluffing too, though. I'm trying to instill a false confidence in him by making him think that he's got me, and then I'm going to turn around and just shove it right in his face at the last possible second. And that estimated time of death is correct, there's no way it could be wrong. I mean, I don't think we're gonna start questioning the validity of an autopsy report now, are we? Is it possible that the culprit did something to obscure the real time of death? No, there are no giant freezers in this case, I'm sorry to say, it's the middle of summer. Not in this case. There was no snow or anything to keep the body from decomposing. And there's no fridge on that airship big enough to fit a body into. So you've already checked into that, I see. Well, she would, after all we've been through. It all comes down to the estimated time of death, doesn't it? Couldn't the killer mess with the victim's time of death by keeping the body on ice? Yeah, if they had the means to. The prosecution is treating the estimated time of death as an absolute. But only Sith deals in absolutes. I take it you're not a Sith then, Mr. Wright. No, I'm not. But I can still fart. I take it you don't think it is, huh, Nick? In that case, we're gonna to have to find a way to convince them otherwise. Yeah, there's gotta be a way somehow. So then, is the time actually right? Well, we're saying, yeah, I believe, I believe the time is right. I just think the circumstances might be wrong. Um... Ugh, the autopsy report states the estimated time of death was after the reception. And that estimated time... Okay, what what did we just say in the dialogue? I was too busy making that stupid Sith joke. Yeah, it sounds like we're, we're trying to say there must have been a way for him to fudge this time of death. In that case, let's just look and see. It's probably something really obvious. Is there anything here in the Flying Chapel pamphlet that suggests that there was any sort of refrigerator or... Refrigerador. So if you look at the photo, it doesn't look like anything. Like they, they couldn't have stuffed a bunch of ice in here with him that would have melted or anything. I don't see like a puddle on the ground or anything like that. No, the note doesn't have anything to do with this. Oh, hang on. A device that utilizes dry ice to emit a large amount. Oh, ho. Oh. That would be a way to get ice, wouldn't it? I mean, that at least proves that there's ice somewhere on the ship. And it's dry ice, even worse. Ugh. Objection! I mean, I guess if you're already dead, it kind of doesn't matter. Don't ever touch dry ice, kids. It's not good for you. It'll hurt you. I admit that the estimated time of death does contradict my theory. Finally, and that means your theory that the victim was killed before the reception? It's still entirely plausible! Sorry to interrupt, I just love doing that though. Huh? What makes you think that? The killer could have falsified the time of death by using a certain item in the reception hall. Please take a look at this. 
And what is that contraption, Mr. Bright? Uh, it's a fog machine, Your Honor. Used to create a special romantic atmosphere in the hall. And this machine could have been used to falsify the time of death? Yes, Your Honor, because this machine uses dry ice to perform its magic. I'm nodding my head right now. Dry ice? Oh yeah, that's super cold stuff commonly used to make theatrical fog, right? I see. So your claim is that this dry ice was used to keep the body cold. Would they really have done this again? Like, they're really doing this in another case? I feel like this is the fourth time we've seen this. Because there was, well, spoilers for previous games, there was the body in the snow in case three of this game. There was the, like, the freezer in Investigations 2. In that case, I guess the victim could have been killed before the reception. Oh, damn. Order! Order in this court! Well, Mr. Edgeworth, what do you have to say about this development? Oh, Baldadash. That the victim was killed in the hold before the wedding reception. The prosecution acknowledges the possibility of this claim. Now we're getting somewhere. Shoot. The, the prosecution would also like to thank you, Mr. Wright. Because you just fucked up. For what? I didn't know how a certain piece of evidence fit into this case. But now, thanks to you, I do. Uh-oh. Is he talking about the note? Okay, because see, the note is smudged, right? Could it be that part of that is because of the... Yeah, the moisture from the fog or from the dry ice or something? I don't know. To get into the hold, one needs a key card like this one. Oh yeah, there, there's that too. Oh, we have a record of those who, who entered the hold with such key cards. Mmm, well, ain't that something? Yeah, that's something, all right. The time's unspecified, but these are the last three entries on the day of the murder. And as you can see, the last person to enter the hold that day was the defendant. It wasn't, because somebody else had her card. So the one who moved the body out of the hold must have been. That's right, it was none other than the defendant. Nope. It was not. It was absolutely not. Hey Nick, take a look at this entry record. There are a couple of other names on here besides Ellen. Hey, you're right. According to the entry record, Mr. Edgeworth, Pierce Nick Odey had also gone into the hole. Isn't it possible that he could have been the culprit? Objection! Hell no. Sorry, but Mr. Nick Odey was escorting a few of the guests at the time. I'm sure they would be happy to testify to that fact if you'd like. Think me cocky all you'd like, Mr. Wright, but my confidence is rarely misplaced. Ah! Now then, it's probably safe to assume that after killing the victim in the hold, the defendant moved his body to the hall in order to dispose of it discreetly. What do you mean by discreetly? The defendant volunteered to take care of the reception's cleanup personally. That means she would have had the chance to dispose of anything in any way she wanted, including taking the lantern off of the airship without raising any suspicion. Don't tell me you didn't know about Miss Wyatt volunteering for cleanup duty. No, I remember that part. It seemed really strange, too. For my last task as servant of the Sprocket household, I offered to take on the preparation and cleanup of the reception banquet. Yeah. Oh boy. Gah! <laughs> down, put that hand down. Look at you sweating buckets like a rookie. Even after all these years, nevertheless. Thank you for proving that the only person who could have killed the victim in the hold is... Ellen Wyatt. That zoom in, though. Boy, this just keeps getting better and better. Great job, Phoenix. Now we're back to square one. Oh, we're not back to square one. I'm gonna take you all the way back to square zero, pal. Perhaps you should ask Miss Sykes for some help in reviewing defense for dummies. Holy shit, dude. Way to go, sir. You got Mr. Wright in a cold sweat. I wonder if maybe the promise of seeing that miserable look on his face is what brought me back to court today. It certainly made all my stress and woes as chief prosecutor just melt away. 
Guess we had a lot of stress built up. I'll give him some to stress over before we're through today. Your Honor, shut him up before he turns out to be right. Uh, he's already right. Um, your Honor, the prosecution asks that you render your verdict at this time. Before he has a chance to do something stupid. Before that man over there tries to throw the court into chaos with his meaningless bluffs. That too. Mm, I see you, Mr. Wright. Are there any last meaningful bluffs you'd like to present to this court? <laughs> Why does he have to assume it'll be a bluff? Nick, hurry up and throw a good one out there. I will, I will. Okay. Um... Well, alright then. Let's see. I've got it! This is gonna be bad. How do you know it was Miss Wyatt who used her keycard? There you go. After all, if it turns out that somebody else used her card... It would mean Miss Wyatt didn't do it! Interesting. And are you able to prove this bluff to be true? I don't actually know. I don't think I can. We just heard that, right? Wait a minute, Nick. I can think of a certain somebody who might have used Ellen's keycard. You can. Remember? The one who was sneaking around the hold in spite of not being a family member? Oh, that's right. Here we go. Your Honor, the defense would like to call a certain witness to the stand. Oh, no. I need the testimony of this person who may have entered the hold with Miss Wyatt's card. Oh, this is so bad. Wait, he was on the front page, wasn't he? He's right here. Take that! Oh, no! That's your witness? Are you saying that that numbskull was on the airship? Or you never breathed a word about that to me? Are you saying all three of us now, us childhood friends, are going to be reunited in the trifecta from hell? And I say, bring it on, baby. It's not surprising, because Mr. Nick Odie told him to keep quiet about it. But Mr. Butts himself admitted it to me. He claimed to have found a way to sneak into the Flying Chapel's hold to see Miss Wyatt. This photo he took and gave to me as proof. Oh, at least it wasn't a drawing this time. Oh, shoot, you don't have one of those too, do you? So we'll get back to that later. Then was it he who moved the lantern with the body inside to the reception hall? Well, that's even better! Haul his ass to jail! You know as well as I that with him, anything is possible. And this is one possibility we should definitely look into. Oh my god, it would actually be worth it to lose this case, to see his sniveling weasel ass. Never mind. I can't believe this. What in the world is he doing mixed up in this? Why does this always happen? Come on, Mr. Edgeworth, let's do it. Remember what we've been saying since elementary school? Say it. When something smells, it's usually the butts. Exactly. Oh, perfect time to play this music. Oh, that Larry. He'll pay for this. Well, if you want to extract your payment now... He's right up there in the gallery. <laughs> Yikes! Oh my god, dude. God. Bailiff sees the witness before he makes a run for it. No! Why does this stuff always happen to me? <laughs> Sorry, Larry, but you brought this on yourself. Let us break for a 15 minute recess. I ask that both sides prepare in any way they can imagine possible for the next witness's testimony during this time. So, we're we gonna find out about the P pterodactyl here now. I don't think we're going to find out about that this early. That seems like one of those mysteries that they would just hang over your head for as long as they possibly could. Until finally. Wow, it's been a while since I've had this much fun and excitement. Face off against Mr. Edgeworth, a harrowing tightrope walk for the defense. Ooh, I'm exhausted already. Boss! Boss? Oh, hey, hey, what's up? I'm here for moral support. Athena, are you all done practicing for Trucy's magic show? Well, to be perfectly honest, I sort of ran away. But that's because she was putting my life in danger, I tell you. I see. I think I'll need to have a one-on-one -on -one with her. You're really athletic and fit, Athena, so Trucy probably thinks she can run you ragged. That may be true. 
which is why not even Trucy can keep up with me when I run at full speed. <laughs> oh no! Well, okay, there she is. Oh my god. What are we gonna do with these two here? No, we don't have- I can't have this talk with right, right now. Now, Athena, it's time to practice human combustion magic. Go on, douse yourself in this gas a What? Don't worry, it's a magic trick after all, so it's perfectly safe. Run away! <laughs> hey you, you're not getting off that easily! No, 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 get back here, Trucy, I could use your thing. On Larry. Well, it sure does. Oh man. You mean Pearly. Oh, and Detective Gumshoe. Can't forget him. We had all kinds of fun at the crime scenes back then, remember? We sure did. Leaving me to do all the serious investigating, as I recall. Of course, we'll be back in session, Mr. Right, dude. Right, thank you. So Larry's the next witness, right? I can't wait to see what happens. Sadly, I can already imagine it. <laughs> Sadly. And 15 minute break is up. Back in court we go. This seems like a pretty good place to probably leave a cliffhanger here. Oh, I am so sorry about that, but... Yeah, so next time on uh, Phoenix Wright Spirit of Justice, Larry on the witness stand. The train wreck is pretty much guaranteed. See you then.